Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be doing a little work on the E36. Uh, I took the car to VIR in October and was playing around on the skid pad with the NCE30 group and my center support bearing started to go out on me and you can see uh, what happened here. The rubber completely disintegrated. So I bought a new one uh, off Rock Auto and apparently um, apparently there's two different styles. There's an offset one and the dimensions are all different. Um, doesn't really specify a difference between one or the other. Maybe I just bought the wrong thing, but the uh, it just doesn't mount up. You can see here, it just, just doesn't fit. So um, I'm gonna be chopping this one up and then making a new bracket for it because I've already got it. So I'm gonna try and make it work. Uh, after I do that, I'm gonna work on some exhaust and I've got a steering rack out of a Z3 that I'm gonna be putting in. It'll reduce so many times you turn the wheel lock to lock uh, so it should be a little snappier and I've also got a ball joint that's bad. So I've got a new outer tie rod end to uh, install. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to use this spot weld cutting tool to cut through the spot welds on the center support bearing to remove this bracket. And I've got a couple pieces here that I cut out on the plasma that I should be able to weld in and hopefully it'll just bolt right up. I'm hoping that when I weld it onto this piece, the rubber doesn't catch fire. I've got a little wet rag here that I can kind of dab on it in case it doesn't want to catch fire and uh, see what it does, I guess.
before we get started in the exhaust, I went ahead and got this Porta Band uh, made by Bauer. It's a Harbor Freight brand. Um, if you don't know already, I'm a pretty big Harbor Freight fan. Uh, pretty much started my business using those tools, and um, some of them are great. Some some are not so great, but a lot of them hold up pretty well. So I've seen a lot of people use a Porta Band on a little table that's created for uh, holding this thing. Um, so I went ahead and threw this together on CAD and cut it out on the plasma cutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this thing up so I can put this thing on this table. So hopefully it'll make it a little easier to cut exhaust because I used to just sit down on the floor with a, an abrasive chop saw and just hold it at an angle and cut it. So hopefully this will make it a little safer and hopefully offer a little more precision with the cuts. Since this is gonna be a little more of a track car uh, that's street legal, I'm gonna go ahead and just chop off the uh, the cat and the resonator and just run a straight pipe in there. Hopefully, it's not gonna sound too loud. Uh, the cats the cats are from 1993 when the car was built, so I can't imagine they're in any good shape anyway. So they're probably not doing me any good. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and lob these off. I'm just gonna weld in a little piece to hold the pipes together, kind of keep them keep them together so I don't want to get all wonky once I start cutting. And I'm just gonna cut these off with a sawzall. Uh, score it up with a flapper disc and then go ahead and chop this up and weld those in and uh, we'll start from there.
truth on the sound of this exhaust. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Actually, that wasn't my first time starting it up. I've already driven this thing around for a couple days and it sounds terrible. So I am going to be going ahead and welding that cat and resonant air back in because this is just, it's embarrassing driving this thing around. So the biggest mistake I've made on this car and uh, well, the only way you learn is trying, right? Um, I'll talk to you when I'm done with that. I'm not gonna bother videoing it because it's the same thing. So see you in a bit. All right, I put the cats and the resonant airs back in. Let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a spin and see how she sounds. It's a nice day. Uh, it's actually uh, jorts weather. So, uh, oh, my legs are pretty white, aren't they? Uh, so uh, let's just go for a ride and enjoy this weather and see how she handles with this new rack and with the new exhaust. So I'm just taking a little stroll up uh, Highway 80. It's just a little bit north of where we live. Kind of takes you up to the Blue Ridge from Marion. Beautiful drive, twisties, um, just gotta be safe. So far, I'm really liking this exhaust note. Um, if you were curious, what I'm using is a Flowmaster 40 series muffler. I'll put a link to that below. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's a good balance between aggressive, but not so aggressive that it's annoying. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is this steering rack is just insane how much it's improved the reaction time of the steering. It takes a lot less rotations of the wheel to uh, make the turn. I'm gonna have to do a little work on my headliner. It is an old car, so kind of expected. It's been kind of flapping around like that for a couple years now, so um, probably a good time to take it out and do a little refurbishing on it before the whole thing falls down. One thing I didn't do after installing that rack is doing alignment so this thing definitely still needs an alignment but even without that I just kind of did a quick tape measure eyeball and it's still holding up pretty well um, could probably be tweaked to be a little better but I'm going to wait until I put in the camera plates to, to do an alignment I'm going to attempt to do it myself using the string method or some other do it yourself method before uh, I give up and bring it in I kind of want to learn how to do it so that I can do it to all my cars because after doing modifications on all my cars and bringing them all in, the cost is going to eat me a lot from just alignments, let alone everything else. One of my favorite things about being up here is tunnels. up this episode um, we're going to enjoy a little bit more time up here on the Blue Ridge and then uh, get back home and do some editing I'll see you in the next show <laughs> you thought you got rid of me huh well turns out when I got to a point where I was gonna turn the camera around and get some footage of some mountains rolling by my uh, one of my coolant hoses decided to bust so if you if you have an E36 there is a coolant hose. I call it the octopus. It's like right underneath the intake. It like splits off in four or five different ways. And I've always hated that thing. And that's what broke, like right, right in between two of the hoses. Like we'll call it the armpit of the hoses. And well, uh, 
it was just spraying right out of there and um, what I did was I I have a little ratchet strap holding this tripod and of course I don't have any tools or anything with me which I usually always do but I didn't for this trip I figured I'd come up here real quick and come back uh, anyways I cut up some of that ratchet strap and I just kind of took those hoses and squeezed them together with the with the with a piece of the strap and the pressure from that is what's keeping the coolant in currently so I'm just keeping the revs really low and luckily I'm just going down the mountain so I'm not overheating the engine too much Jesus. Uh, and so far it seems to be containing the coolant my temperatures are staying pretty good uh, unfortunately I didn't have that much water with me I always usually carry water with me but uh, I was a little low on that and luckily uh, a nice couple stopped and asked if I needed help and they had some water so they, they gave me their drinking water uh, to get me back at home so thank you I don't know if you're watching this probably not but I really appreciate that that saved my day and uh, it's getting me home just fine so anyways uh, I guess that wraps up this episode I will uh, see you on the next episode unless something else happens. <laughs> Gotta love these BMWs and their coolant problems, right? <laughs>